Owl's Time for Life show that answers the philosophical question, if a tree falls in the forest and lands on a guy's head and, you know, a bunch of bees come out of the branches and right into his pants, does he make a sound? Well, the answer is yes. Believe me, I know. And anyway, <laughs> here's a man who has a bunch of sounds of his own, of the star of the Red Green Show, a man I like to call uncle, even when he doesn't have me in the headlock. Here he is, <laughs> Mr. Red Green. Hi, Daryl. Thank you, and uh, welcome to Possum Lodge. I'm Red Green, head of, head of this Possum Lodge, which is Chapter 11. And uh, you've already met uh, my nephew, Harold, who's been sconned on the head by his share of trees falling in the forest. Uh, Harold is actually the producer and director of the show, whatever that means. It happens to mean that when I push these buttons, this happens. <laughs> anyway, uh, lots of stuff going on up the lodge this week. Uh, we're getting a brand new four-man raft, so there's probably going to be a lot of arguing about which four guys are going to get to win that first. And besides, another thing that was going on was, uh, you know, the bunch of us like to just kind of work on our own cars. So we thought we'd build one of them mechanics pits like they have at the gas station. So we thought we just would dig it. And we all got a bunch of shovels and picks and hockey sticks. <laughs> and we went out there and actually the way it worked was uh, Moose Thompson and Helmet Wintergarten were the only ones that were, were digging the trench and the rest of us just kind of stood there leaning on our tools. So it looked like a real professional government job. <laughs> but uh, they, got her dug, they got her dug pretty fast because the ground was real soft. Uh, although hacking through the water line took some time. But uh, they got her all done there and it was long enough that we could uh, get six cars on that. We just uh, would straddle the ditch right up there. Just one, two, three, bang, 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 bang. And then we all crawled under our own vehicles and, and started working on them. Unfortunately, like I said, the, the ground was a little soft and uh, one side started to cave in and the, all the cars started rolling over and they all ended up right, right upside. Whoa, yeah, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. What happened to the guys working under the cars? Uh, well, the, the, the cars went so slow, you see, that the guy could actually open the driver's door and uh, climb up over the seat and go right out the passenger door. <laughs> so, so we ended up with six cars lying there upside down. Boy, you don't see that every day. No, no, not, not, not since uh, Moose got fired from that job valet parking. <laughs> this is cool. You know, it's like that town in Texas where they got those six Cadillacs buried in the ground and only their tails stick out. It's really avant-garde and trade cool. Oh, yeah, and it's a major tourist attraction. I, I guess they must have done their, 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 their mechanics pit in the same kind of sandy soil that we've got, eh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get the show rolling, Harold. Hopefully not into the ground. <laughs> I, so, all righty, then. <laughs> Is that a raft here? Yeah. <laughs> Where should I put it? How about inside a large tire? <laughs> Just set it on the couch there, Dwayne. <laughs> That's a raft? That's your idea of a four-man raft? <laughs> yep, Murray's own brand. That's not a raft! That's a piece of homemade crap! That's a kindergarten science project! Well, the duct tape is a nice touch. <laughs> well, yeah, enjoy it, Douglas. Uh, let's go, Dwayne. Hold it, Murray. Hold it, Dwayne. I'm not paying for this. Oh, <laughs> well, you already have, remember? I want a refund with interest. Oh, that's good, Douglas. I like that. But we have a policy about returning items. Oh? What's that? We don't. <laughs> this is not a raft. A raft has a bow and a stern. Well, this one has lots of side. <laughs> How can you call this a four-man raft? Well, maybe it's out of a four-by-four. Four. <laughs> How do you put the motor on? Well, it hangs in the middle there. <laughs> I'm real impressed, Murray. Calling that a raft takes lots of guts. <laughs> Murray, if you value your reproductive abilities, <laughs> you will get this out of here and very quickly give me back your money? Oh, it's the Lodge's money, Douglas. Let's go, Dwayne. Okay, Murray. Hold it, Murray. Forget it, Douglas. Let's go, Dwayne. Okay, Murray. Hold it, Dwayne. Okay, Douglas. Ignore him, Dwayne. Okay, Murray. No one move! <laughs> Pretty to look at, lovely to hold, but if you break it, consider it sold. That's our creed, you know. <laughs> You can learn a lot at parties, as we did last night. We learned that fat people aren't always jolly, and you should never dare someone to throw bullets in the fire. We learned that alcohol 
and power tools don't mix. <laughs> and we learn that the fire department doesn't always arrive soon enough to make any tangible difference. <laughs> This week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're gonna show you some things you can do with all of those uh, oil drums that you have uh, lying around your house, like everybody does. Now, we're not too bad here at the lodge because uh, we can use them for flotation for the dock or uh, maybe make a couple of ashtrays out of them, you know, but maybe some of you wanna be more stylish because you're actually concerned with what other people think. So I suggest you do something like this. You take uh, a cold chisel uh, and a persuader of some kind, and you just uh, drive a hole in, in the middle of the drum. What you have there is just an ideal uh, piggy bank uh, for the youngsters. <laughs> That's enough. Now, what you can do there, too, is just uh, weld a hunk of chain on here and just hang it over the little fellow's neck, and uh, he can go out and Halloween collect for UNICEF. <laughs> and once she gets uh, filled up, of course, you can drop her on her side, and you can use it to roll the lawn. <laughs> or you can just uh, knock the lid off the thing, and there's your college education paid for. Yes, that's the way you care to spend your money. <laughs> and another thing you can do is uh, maybe get an old chisel or a screwdriver and, and pry the lid off. Or you could, you could use whatever you got in your pockets, you know, your, your car keys or, or a bottle opener <laughs> or a business card. Or it just comes off as easy as pie, too. Okay, uh, once you've done that, you can use the uh, lid as a serving tray and uh, you cover it all with uh, crackers. And then uh, you fill your, your oil drum with uh, pate. Or if you're on a budget, just uh, use peanut butter with anchovies in it. <laughs> yes, can you take a cracker, scoop into the... Oh boy, so that looks great, doesn't it? Okay, uh, maybe we should have uh, rinsed the oil out of there first. <laughs> but uh, if you're having a party and you got 3,000 guests or so coming, I'm telling you, an oil drum full of pate is going to just serve everybody. You're going to run out of crackers way before you run out of pate. And the beauty of it is with this system that when the party's over, just pop the lid back on there and run a bead of silicone caulking around the outside, and uh, that'll keep indefinitely without refrigeration. <laughs> We've had this particular pate uh, since... Uh, that was in the 40s, I think. And if you're good with a cutting torch, you know, you can really go to town on these units. Uh, you know, you can cut up the oil drums into all kinds of different things. Love seat, uh, or uh, patio furniture, or some kind of a decorative awning. There's all kinds of things you can do. You know, another idea uh, is a bird feeding station. You know, like one of these, uh, you're, you're talking about a 50-gallon bird feeding station. You only have to fill that sucker once a year. <laughs> There you got yourself a dandy bird feeder. And, uh, you know, just as a joke, you can uh, fill that thing up with oat bran. Uh, the birds will eat that, and uh, they'll wish they'd gone south, but you're going to have the best lawn on the street. <laughs> and here's something else you can do with an oil drum. Uh, you can build yourself a, a doorbell that you can hear from any room in the house. What you do is you just uh, get a pretty heavy little uh, persuader such as this, and you hang it from uh, one of your rafters or the doorknob of your bedroom, whatever. And uh, you have that hanging down, and you line it up with an oil drum, and then you put the hammer over the door, and then when anyone arrives, uh, swings in, then boy, you, you can really hear that. I'll show you how it works. This is going to be the sound you're going to hear when your guests arrive. <laughs> okay, you got to watch for the type of knot that you use on that. <laughs> okay, for this next thing now, you're going to need a picnic table. Now, you can buy a picnic table, or you can build your own, or... Uh, if you have a decent chain cutter, you can get one free from a conservation area. <laughs> and the other thing you're going to need is uh, a couple of these steel rods. Uh, these are what they call reinforcing rods that they use for the construction crews, but, uh, you know, you can horse them right out of the concrete if you get there before it sets. That's how I learned all my Italian swear words. <laughs> and the next thing you're going to need is uh, what we call a hole saw. And uh, use that, you're going to punch some holes in uh, each end uh, of, of the oil drums and also into the picnic table. What you have uh, is an industrial strength tea wagon. <laughs> You're right, Harold. You know, it does look like Fred Flintstone's car. <laughs> so anyway, we uh, put our pate up here. <laughs> it's a 
go. And uh, we're all set to go serve our guests. Uh, so remember, until next time, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> <clears throat> Yabba dabba do. <laughs> Here. Hey, you get away from there. 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 It is spring. I pluck the petals from a flower. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. I pluck another flower. She loves me. She loves me not. I pluck another flower. She loves me not. Another flower and another until there is one flower left. She loves me, she loves me not, she loves me. Oh good, she loves me. The gardener, on the other hand, hates my guts. <laughs> Well, the situation with the lodge member of cars is still up in the air, or I should say, down on the ground. And then the four-man raft has caused some unpleasant feelings, too. Actually, I should say there's some unpleasant smell. I mean, that rubbery odor, boy, it's like, uh, it's like old gym socks. Or, you know, another time we get that smell is uh, Thanksgiving when Eddie makes one of his pumpkin pies. You know, it's, it's been going for about 20 minutes now. The thing's scaring me. Why doesn't Douglas just, you know, write it off? What's 60 bucks? Oh, well, my van was 60 bucks, Harold. Yeah, and you were able to write off that loss. You know, why can't Douglas do the same? Well, Harold, you know, it's tough for a man to admit that he's made a mistake, you know? The whole point of being a man is just to, is just to tough these things through, see them through, you know? I mean, take a stand, show some leadership, and others will follow. Well, that way you have six cars upside down instead of just one. Basically, yes, but, but that way you end up looking equally stupid with everybody else, you see? And that's okay. It's, it's, it's a male pride thing, you know? Something that you'll understand when you're older and male. Oh. Okay. This is not a boat, Red. <laughs> I've worked this marina all my life. I've seen skiffs, catches, everything, you know, kayaks. This is not a boat. So it doesn't have a lot of trading value then? Well, if you brought me something in that was more boat-like, Red, you know, like, an old apple crate or, or an old bathtub or something. No, I haven't got anything like that. Well, I can give you a buck for it. <laughs> Douglas, pay 1200 1200 what, dollars? Oh, yeah. I can't see this particular item being worth 1200 bucks anywhere, Red. Unless there's a $1,000 bill in that tackle box or something. <laughs> no, I, I, it bothers my mind when I look at the size of this tire to imagine the RV that this would fit, this, this tire here. And it'd have to be 100 feet long and 30 feet wide. <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, Douglas was wondering maybe you could just kind of trade us even for a wooden punt. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an RV that big, it, you could have a spiral staircase in there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'll go tell Douglas some bad news, man. I mean, it would sit so high off the ground that you could have a basement. Yeah. An actual basement. Well, uh, thanks for your time, Glenn. I gotta, I gotta get back to work. Yeah, all right, Red. Imagine trying to back up an RV that big. I mean, imagine trying to back up something 100 feet long into a parking spot at the mall. I mean, you'd be in those big, huge side mirrors, you know? What, what am I thinking? Something that big would have to come with that standard on it. It would have everything. Standard equipment on that thing. There'd be no options. That would be a dream boat. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dwarf. That's just that pie in the sky stuff, honey. Well, call 911. It's the time for Adventures of Bill. Uh, Bill said we are going to do some archery, so I brought a bow and a couple of arrows, but it's not the way he had in mind. He even just chucked those out of there. This, I thought, was a little presumptuous. <laughs> that was a fitting response, I felt. Uh, what he wanted to do was he wanted to go into the woods and uh, make our own uh, bows and arrows just from whatever we could find in the woods. So it's amazing how fast you can find stuff when you're filming. And uh, I came up with what I thought was a good uh, stick, and 
And Bill's gonna make that uh, into some type of a bow. I, I mean, I don't ask because Bill's, he knows what he's doing. I'm just kind of, you know, poking my way along. I'm using logic and common sense. He's using a lot of book reading and, and his stuff. Anyway, I got my bow done and he got his done. <laughs> a little different, I guess. He's more of a repeater, I guess, is the thought there. I didn't question it though. Now we want to go find some little sticks to use for the shafts of the arrows. So I saw something lying there I thought would be adequate, but Bill, you know, he's a bit of a perfectionist. He wants just, a lot. to me, that tree seemed, it seemed dead, but I guess he just wanted it out of the, I think he wanted just to get that out of the way more. And then, there, well, uh, but then Bill's, the, Bill's really the woodsman. Uh, but he did find something there. Yeah, he could have just got that. And then, oh, I see. Just a little plowing. And now he's back and, uh, thank you, Bill. Now we're going to carve out the shafts of the, again, here with the arrow shaft. He picked one that I thought was a little, well, I lost my turn. Anyway, we tied stones onto the shafts of the arrows, so that would be the, uh, well, that'd be the arrowhead. Yeah, and Bill's was uh, pretty generous. I think. Then we snip off the string. I got the that's the little leaves we use for the feathers, and uh, it was kind of fun, you know. I was getting a bit injured, and Bill put a target up on the tree and started to feel like uh, day camp, you know. And there's mine, and and, uh, and there's and there's Bill's. So I uh, I loaded mine up and I gave her a try. How's that, Robin Hood? And now Bill's going to probably split that arrow with his. Could happen, I guess. <laughs> but not too likely. So he abandoned it. Look at this. Now you see Bill is, is a be-prepared kind of thing. Whips that out and... Uh, bang on. <laughs> now we got enough to make uh, bows and arrows for the whole lodge. <laughs> The uh, four-man raft has really come in handy for getting the cars out of the ditch. What we do is we, uh, we slide the deflated tube in uh, underneath the cars and then we start pumping it up and it, it presses up against the roof of the car and uh, when she gets up to 60, 70 pounds, the car just pops right out of there and lands, lands right on its wheels. But uh, of course, uh, Murray and Douglas are still at each other's throats. Uh, Douglas hired a skywriter to go up and fly over the store and say, do not shop at Murray's. <laughs> that ever neat, exposing a guy with letters 500 feet high. Yeah, but unfortunately, the pilot bought the smoke canister at Murray's store. So, you know, it misfired, and, and what he ended up writing was, Donut Shop at Murray's. <laughs> and Murray and Wayne are making a fortune selling donuts. <laughs> and of course, Douglas won't admit he made a mistake, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, it's that male pride thing, right? Yeah. See, you're lucky. You don't suffer from that, like, male ego thing. No, no, not really, no. Jeez, it's too bad more men can't be like you, you know? Having nothing to be proud of. <laughs> Is that that inner tube thing going again? Oh, no, that's the call of the wild possum. The meeting is about to come to order. Come on, Uncle Ray, let's get down there and find out what's going on. Yeah, okay, Harold. Well, uh, so far today, we've had a car tune up, turn into an auto graveyard, and we've had a four-man raft turn into a whoopee cushion. Let's see what the lodge meeting turns into. <laughs> Red. He sold us a four-man raft that turned out to be a donut with gas. Well, you could have come down and looked at it first, but all you cared about was the price. See that? See that? That's the last thing you worry about when you buy something from me, the price. I am ordering all the Possum Lodge members to boycott Murray's store until I get a full refund for the raft and the Skyrider. He can afford it out of donut sales. Well, that is just fine. All I ever get from you is, why is that so expensive? Or we can't afford that. Or why does all your stock have all these burn marks on them? Well, you are not getting a refund, and I do not care if you ever walk into my store again. 
Your business isn't worth keeping. You are a crook. Well, I'd rather be a crook than a skinflint. I admire people who make definite career choices. <laughs> you know, ordinarily, I'd put this to a vote. But this is a special problem, and it requires a special solution. A duel. <laughs> The fire extinguisher. You two guys are gonna need seconds, right? Dwayne, you like seconds. So you be Murray second. Glenn, you be Douglas a second. Oh man. Uh Douglas. Be brave. Just be brave. <laughs> Alright, guys. Assume the position. Come on. Come on. Go. Back to back. <laughs> belly to belly. Yeah. Take the fire extinguishers. Now here's how it works. You take three paces, you turn, you fire. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. What? seconds to work out some kind of a compromise. Well, uh, if Dwayne can cough up that $60 refund, uh, I think I can find another raft for 40 bucks. How does that sound? Well, we can only give you $50 because the other 10 was the cost on that item. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you 10 bucks for the old inner tube and I'll throw that in and then, then we're there, right? Done. Done. <laughs> All right, great. What we're proposing... Put that down, Bill. What we're proposing is that, uh, Curry store is going to give us 50 bucks back on the raft. I'm going to throw in a saw buck. We're going to get another 40 from the Lodge Kitty. We can buy a new four-man raft off of Glen. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. There's no other Lodge business, right? I'm going to call on Glenn here to give us an evening's entertainment. <laughs> it's movie magic time. I'll get the lights for you. Thanks, Red. Where's that screen? I got eight my screen. You're gonna like this one, I think, Douglas. Well, it's nice to see Murray and Dwayne get what's coming to them. None of their customers ever have. And Douglas has learned that you get what you pay for. It's like my Uncle Clydesdale used to say. If you buy the best, you'll never regret it. But if you steal the best, you'll never regret it and still have money for a nice dinner. And that's a philosophy he maintained throughout his prison term. Anyway, uh, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I'm uh, bringing the inner tube so we can pop your mother out of the bathtub. <laughs> so, until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. And that's the history of the overpass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first one, okay. Uh, oh, hey, this is it. The focusing in the... This is a gelding farm. Horses? Yeah. They just, they just raise gelding. That's all they do. Yeah. You gotta plant them pretty deep. The <laughs> no, horses are. Yeah. I think you were Daddy. smart enough to get out of the RV. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>